Brighton Centre will be coming past our position shortly. And let's get started, mate, with the most obvious and prominent update to Inventor 2020, and that is significant changes to the look and feel of it. Yes, this is the visual refresh, and I'm just going to preempt anyone who's going to kick off and hit the roof about, oh, I'm sick of them bloody changing Inventor, oh, it was always changing the way it looks. They haven't changed it in over 10 years, right? It's, it's looked like this for about 10 years. Let's not get overly dramatic about that. But nothing really major has changed. All the buttons are in the same place. In fact, all tab in between the two of them, you can see everything is absolutely identical, except the buttons have just been refreshed. And this visual refresh is part of what Autodesk call their light theme. If you go into the application options of Inventor 2020, go to the colors tab, you'll see an in-canvas color scheme called light theme. And if you're like me and you go looking for a dark theme, well, you're going to be sorely disappointed, mate. And let's talk about this for a second. We are in a world where everybody wants a dark theme, a dark theme, a dark theme, a dark theme, and guess what? A dark theme. But typical textbook order desk decided, let's make the light theme first. And let's say we don't have time to make a dark theme. Come on! We don't want a dark theme because it just looks trendy. It's easier on your eyes when you're staring at it all day. But it will come. It will happen. Never mind. Never mind. It still looks better than it did in Inventor 2019. But with this new visual refresh comes some usability enhancements, which are also very, very welcome. And it mostly surrounds the use of using multiple windows within Inventor. And what I mean by that is if you're in Inventor 2019, uh, you've got the minimize, the, the restore down, and the close buttons up here. If you select restore down, you can float a window around, but it's restricted within Inventor's graphical interface. You can't drag this onto a second monitor. No idea if you even tried, but it just stops there. Uh, but with Inventor 2020, we can do this now, and it, is, it actually works really well. And it works like dockable palettes. So what you do is you hit this button here for restore previous layout, and it'll tile everything that you've got open. And then if you grab the tab at the bottom, just left click and pull that away, this can now be dragged onto a second monitor. So I'm going to drag that out onto my second monitor, turn that on, and then you can see here, this is now floating away from the main Inventor interface, and you can maximize it and work with that on a second monitor. And that's definitely, definitely welcome. So I want to drag this back over onto the main screen. And then if you want to restore it, you can just grab the tile and you can see it docks. It'll snap down here at the bottom and you can maximize that back up. So that's a most welcome. That's really, really nice. And finally, for the visual refresh in Inventor 2020, there's a couple of enhancements that I want to talk about. First off is the thread texture has been updated. This is what it now looks like in 2020. Uh, it's what it looked like in 2019. Uh, sure. I mean, it, it looks more 3D and slightly sharper and crisper. For better or for worse, sure. All right. The ground plane's been updated. It's now entirely transparent and it's got colored representations for the axes, red and blue in this case for X and Z. Uh, whereas in 2019 it was more opaque without colors on it. And finally, we have the introduction of graphical presets in Inventor 2020 called Balanced performance and high quality available on the view tab. I'm on the fence with these. It's low quality, medium and high quality. And all they do is configure the options available already in the appearance panel. That's all they do. So when you enable the performance preset, it turns the visual style to shaded, turns off all the shadows and it turns off the image based lighting. So you don't get this HDRI effect reflecting off the models. Whereas the high quality mode will turn on the shadows. It'll enable the realistic style and uh, enable the image-based lighting as well. That's it. That's all it does. Funnily enough, what it doesn't do, if you turn on, if you're struggling with a massive model and you turn on performance mode, what it doesn't do is disable anti-aliasing. It <laughs> leaves that on as quality. So never mind. So there's your graphical presets there. Not overly clever. It just configures these appearance options. But, but there you go. That's the visual refresh for Inventor 2020. 
And next up on the What's New list is Inventor Read-Only Mode. This is your new viewer for Inventor Files moving forwards. It replaces the archaic and objectively hideous Inventor View. Uh, this is, if, you if you're particularly attached to it, it's still available as a download from the Autodesk website and it still installs with Vault, but Inventor View is no more. To get at Read-Only Mode, you'll download Inventor, the full media set, launch the executable and it'll give you the option to install proper inventor or read-only mode. If you go for read-only mode, it'll not prompt you for a serial number or anything like that. It'll install a client like this and it'll not consume any license and it'll not time out, but it'll let people open up parts, assemblies, drawings and presentation files in a read-only environment. And it's much better than inventor view. I think I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, but what you can do in read-only mode is extremely limited but you do get better abilities for handling larger data sets. You get express mode, uh, you can query the bill of materials, for example, export that out to a spreadsheet using the regular inventor tool sets. And you can take measurements on the assembly, which is quite nice, analyze interference. Beyond that, not much. You've got view tools, but that's about it. Downside of inventor, inventor read-only mode. And this is more of a message to the uh, to the development team who I know will be watching this. Uh, what's this about, me? What's this about? We can take measurements in an assembly. Great. Why can't they do that in a drawing? Where's the measurement tools in a drawing? And why, on what planet, did someone think it was a good idea to not let viewers take measurements, but they can destroy a drawing prior to printing it? Why would I want someone who's viewing an inventor drawing to be able to destroy it and print it out? What's this about? Come on, come on. Anyway, that's something to iterate on in future revisions of read-only mode. And I'm sure if, uh, in the future, new tools will be put in it, I am pretty sure. But that's your read-only mode for Inventor 2020. And next up is Solid Sweep. And this is this is quite the headline new feature. So it's the ability to take a solid object and then sweep it around a, a path. Whereas in the past, we've had to use a sketch profile. So yeah, activate the sweep command. And now you've got this option here to toggle Solid Sweep on and off. If you've got Solid Sweep toggled on and you've got two bodies, two solid bodies in your model, you can pick one solid body, pick your path, and then it'll use that solid object to sweep around that path. So it's it's great that we can do this, but honestly, it's like, aside from this example, I'm kind of struggling to come up with other examples of where you'd use this. It's probably one of those things that you just might not ever use until that one time where you think, oh, wouldn't it be great if I could sweep this object? And now you can. So that's, uh, that's Solid Sweep, brand new for Autodesk Inventor 2020. And indeed, Eagle Eye viewers would have spotted in the last clip that the sweep command has been changed to use that new property palette style dialog box that we saw the mint reduced to the whole command in 2019. It's going to be one of those things, mate. You're just going to have to get used to this because I can see in the future they're going to be migrating all of the commands over to using this property style palette. It's not necessarily a bad thing in the long run because what happens with this is every command that you activate shares the same palette. So you can see that's the sweep command populating the palette. And then when you jump over to whole, it populates the same dialog box. You don't have different dialogues popping up all over the screen in different places, different styles. Uh, it's trying to keep in the keeping the interface consistent, if you like. So the sweep command now uses this new dialog box, but uh, this is the bit that I can see being quite controversial and disruptive. And that is if also for 2020, change the extrude command and that now also uses this new this new property style palette as does revolve and as does the thread command which i'll need a, an object to activate that so you can see that now uses this new property palette so the reason this is disruptive is quite simple really and that is for the likes of extrude it's one of the most frequently used commands and it's it's quite familiar the old style to a lot of us. Everything that you did use is all here in the same place. It's just very difficult to visually get used to something new as the same goes with the likes of Revolve. But it's uh, it's something that it's, it's, it's futile being upset about it. Just gonna have to get used to it because all of the commands eventually will start to move over into this. And there are benefits to it. Uh, it's just a case of just a case of getting used to it, mate. And now for a textbook example of why I've had to rethink my All Buttons Explained series because they've just added a complete new one on the Create panel for parts called Unwrap. And this is a headline new feature as well. For some people, it'll be like, eh, I can't see myself using that too much. For others, it's a complete game changer. Uh, but it's like sheet metal flat pattern for any model. So what you do is execute Unwrap and you've got a whole bunch of options here which I can't go through them all but you can either just say chain all the faces pick the entire part and it essentially just unwraps the entire model flattens every face out onto a, a single sheet 
and then gives you a heat map as well so it shows you which areas are in the highest tension uh, alternatively if you don't choose face chain you can just pick individual faces and then just flatten them out as and when you click them you can change the origin point for example drop it there do whatever you need to do with it once you've created the unwrap it gives you a surface representation which is this thing here which you can then quilt it thicken it out if you want to to create an extra solid alternatively you can see there it creates a view rep for the unwrap which you can isolate off uh, you can save the camera view look straight down on it if you've got a bit more time than i have then right click create a drawn view and then it'll spit the flat pattern or the, the, the unwrap out to a drawn view and then you can export that out as a dxf mate as well yeah i know it's also adaptive back to the native model so if you change the the original faces then the unwrap will update as you would you would hope but it's good that they've done that so that's a that's a that's a good flagship new feature as well inventor 2020 is really delivering on some top features here mate loving that one May I am not exaggerating. This one alone is worth migrating to 2024. It's mind blowing that this has been a thing for so long, and it's it's been fixable all along. Never mind. Remember, in Inventor, when you've got multiple sketches that overlap each other like this, and you want to extrude, say you want to extrude this little middle region here, right? You see this little segment in the middle. So you'd extrude, and would Inventor pick it up? Would it? Heck, it's flicking between, flashing between all these profiles. You just want to get that one in. It just wouldn't do it. It would not do it. Inventor 2020. Not a problem, mate. Watch this. Boom. Straight away. It somehow they've done something which allows it to detect these regions as being separate from each other and isolated. That on its own, mate, is an absolute winner. Let's just ignore the fact that it's been fixable all along and it's taken till now to do it. Let's just 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 run with it, mate. That's amazing. That is really good. And depending on how and which way your personality leans, this will either be a Hallifrican Louie moment or an about time moment. But whilst you're activating a joint, you select the first element for the joint, the second connection point, hold down control, and you can now pick the centre point of a slot for joint placement. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 nice. That is nice, mate. Uh, unfortunately, though, for whatever reason, I don't know why it doesn't work with constraints. Hold down control. Yeah, it's not picking it up for a, like a, a center line axis through there because there isn't one. But whatever, mate, whatever. It works with joints, and that'll do for most people. <laughs> and also for the delectation and delight of the sheet metal workers out there, they've been extended some love with something that's just got to be a massive quality of life improvement. So if, let's say, let's mirror this sheet metal part right we'll mirror this around a random origin plane and there's a new ticky box in 2020 called link sheet metal styles when that's ticked you'll find that any change to the style in the original part will now be reflected in the mirrored part never used to do that so if we edit the original edit the sheet metal style which is uh, called tier 5 we rename if we change the thickness to say 4 mil save that out save and close return back up to assembly level you see, look, updates both the original and the mirrored part to suit the new style from the original over to the mirrored part. I mean, this is this is awesome. This is just, just do it. It's going to be useful for people, small but impactful. So well done to the Inventor team for that as well. So some developers over at Inventor HQ have been working very hard behind the scenes over the last year, giving us some passive performance and productivity enhancements for Inventor 2020. But there's no metrics here or figures to let you know how much of a boost you're going to get for each one of these so i'll just list them all off in text format and we'll just take their word for it that they're all going to be faster so here's a stack of them for the assembly environment we've got i'm not going to read them all but just patterning various components this is going to be a little bit quicker toggling the visibility of various objects panning zooming that kind of stuff it's all going to be just a little bit quicker than it was before and here's a bigger list across various different environments and feature sets like create freeform tools they'll just be that little bit quicker import routines uh, in place editing various sketch tools will all be just a little bit sharper than it was before parts and drawings creating views view preview performance pattern features any card translational improvements so yeah it's just the usual say the usual it's kind of playing it down a little bit i'm sure someone worked very hard on this but just hopefully invented 2020 is just going to be inherently a little bit crisper a little bit sharper faster than it was before without you needing to do anything about it and as you can see, I've just opened up this assembly in express mode because that's where the next new things reside. But can I just make a point of saying, though, there's 13,700 components visible on screen. And look at how nippy that is. 
that's impressive performance that is for such a large assembly anyway uh, some new features available in express mode these mostly revolve around skeletal modeling workflows so there's a couple of things that they've enabled that you couldn't previously do the first being drive constraint so say for example we've got this robot here and i believe it's uh, positioned on a relationship called mate 30 down here at the bottom so if i right click on mate 30 in express mode the drive constraint option is now available and then you can you can configure this and you can see now you can drive a constraint in express mode we can now create 2d sketches in express mode another feature which was completely grayed and blanked out previously in inventor so on the sketch tab in express mode assembly mode uh, you can knock down a 2d sketch you can't create any 3d geometry from the 2d sketch because it is again for the purposes of skeletal modeling but you can see there we can create a 2d sketch whilst in express mode uh, when you exit the sketch all of the, uh, the 3D modeling features are all grayed out. But another thing you can do now as well, if you shift and right click, select sketch features is now available whilst in express mode. And then you can right click on the sketch and then jump into edit as well. We can also select work features and visibility controls in express mode, as well as the visibility for shared and unconsumed sketches is something we can also do right click. And then you can see the visibility toggle is there as well. So a couple of new features there for people who are heavily involved and invested in express mode and skeletal modeling workflows in Inventor 2020. But for this one, this is uh, it's, it's another small enhancement, but it's got to be help now quite a few people is the ability to place threads at assembly level so something that you might be doing later on in the manufacturing stage you can go into the uh, 3d modeling tab and you'll find that the thread feature is now available at assembly level you can knock that on save the uh, save the assembly and when you open up the original part you'll see that the thread feature isn't there at part level but it's supplied at assembly level so another nice little small improvement for inventor 2020 and this next one will be joyful music to the ears of anyone who's all about inventors tubing and piping modules if you go into the file options and then the file tab file naming defaults you may remember in inventor 2019.2 they overhauled the default naming and folder structures giving you full control over the the default names and folder structures for frame generator pieces well they've extended that into the tubing and piping modules giving you absolute full when well, i say absolute full control i haven't looked at it in great depth but it looks like you've now got somewhat full control over the default names the folder structures for everything that's generated when you create tube and pipe runs for example you can get rid of the aip folder which forever in a day has been the digital cancer of any vault administrator so you can get shot of that it's just an amazing example of what it means to just get shit done like the customer base wants something less of the nonsense less of the bs less of the oh it looks like hard work let's just do it and there's certain teams with an autodesk of a data management persuasion who need a good goddamn dressing down on what it means to do that so well done to the inventor team for leading by example and just getting it done. It might have been difficult, it might have been tricky, it might have been complicated, but you know what, that doesn't phase them. They just went and got it done. We can now control all the runs, assemblies, the locations, the, the piping routes, default names, folder structures. You can now control all of this and have full control over where all your pieces go and what they're called. So that's wonderful for anybody who's interested in inventors tubing and piping. And on a quite similar note, there's been an alteration to the data structure of the shaft generator. <laughs> shaft generator. Oh God. But when you're creating shaft components, there's a toggle here now called Enable Disable Subassembly Structure. By default, that's off, I think. But uh, when it's off and you click OK to create a shaft, uh, you'll just get a single IPT, which is dumped into the root folder of where your assembly is. Uh, if you turn this on and then click OK, it'll create a sub-assembly and place the shaft within that. So it's just uh, it's just a toggle depending on what you want to do with this component and how you want to organize it in a bill of material. So uh, it's just a little small change, but it might be uh, it might be quite the time saver for, for some people who need to organize the components that they generate in the shaft component generator in a slightly different way. So that's uh, it's another nice little small but useful addition to Inventor 2020. 
And for the final set of new features in 2020 that I'm going to be demonstrating, uh, leaving the weakest until last, oh, not at all, mate. This is another headline-grabbing, flagship-level, hard-hitting set of new features. This time for the guys who use Frame Generator. They're going to be well happy with this. So head on over to the Design tab and then the Frame panel, and you'll see a new button here called Insert End Cap. This is only going to work if you import the new 2020 desktop libraries or content or Vault content libraries because uh, it's a new set of parts included in those libraries. It's something you would have had to have done manually in the past. Now you just insert end cap, zoom in on the end of the frame, pick the end face. You can place multiple end caps at one go. Zoom in on them. You can see they're insert in from the frames, inset in slightly. You can change that to be offset out on the outside. You can change the corner profiles from being chamfers to uh, filleted corners or just straight up sharp corners if you want to. Uh, but chances are you're going to go with chamfered. Cham you can change the chamfered distance. You can change the thickness of the end cap, how far they're inset in. You can bunk them in, offset from the end of the frame. You can rotate them around. You can change the material type. They're probably not going to be steel end caps. They're going to be plastic of, uh, of some nature. Change the appearance of them. I'm just going to leave them as black. And then the part number of the end cap. If you're going to be using these in production, you're probs going to edit the content center table and pre-program in your company's part numbers. But... You can uh, just leave that as file name and then when you click OK, it'll prompt you for a file name for the end cap. So we can just say, well, let's call both of these parts because they're the same part, they're the same size. We can just call them cap. It's going to create two of them. OK on that. And then that's them in there. Model, mate. Look at that. Just as easy as that. Head on over to the bill of materials, uh, enable the structure tab and you'll see cap is now in there. There's two of them. They're the same one quantified up as two in the bill of materials, ready for the parts list to be made or bought. And there's your end caps made. That's an absolute winning deal for anyone who uses Frame Generator. If you want to, you can also switch over to Part Priority, open them up, and then uh, either they'll come up as grey because the colour black is uh, assembly level appearance override. But uh, you can detail them up, put them on a drawing if you want to. They are individual modelled parts. A couple of other frame generator enhancements as well. They haven't just stopped there. Uh, for example, MITRE is now integrated into the new style dialog for uh, the property panel. Select both of the parts to MITRE and you've got full control over the MITRE, which is a lot user friendly than it used to be. Do that indeed if you want to. We can do two MITRES at once. There we go. Uh, we can also use delete or remove end treatments and that can be done with multiple frames in one go now where you could only do it at one frame at a time previously. Uh, the notch command is also integrated into the new property panel so you can select your two frame members to notch and you've got this, this more user-friendly interface for interacting with a notch which is a lot better than it used to be. Uh, the same goes for lengthen and shorten. You can select two frame members or more and you can behavioral offsets using the flip buttons that you would normally get with the likes of extrude and all the other traditional modeling commands it's just it's just lots better man the amount of work they put into this is incredible so that's it for the demonstrational videos for inventor 2020 i've got to say to the inventor team well done this is an absolute cracker of a release there's people in all industries who are going to be well chuffed with what's been put into this release gone are the days where that where i'd be giving them a slate and for stuff like this nope nothing but good words for the inventor team for 2020 and there you go mate that's it that's inventor 2020 the bulk of the new features there are a few other things that i didn't talk about if you want to go and find them out uh, you can go up to the what's new button up here at the top and then have a little flick through the help to see what else is in there and depending on when you're watching this you should see inventor 2020 appear in your subscription account over the next week or two i want to say thanks to my patreon supporters who have been heavily involved with the discord server i'm really enjoying having the discord server i'm in there a lot and if you enjoyed the senate introduction video that i had at the start of this I showed those guys that before it went live and I was talking to them about it. I'm loving having it, man. If you want to get involved and just talk to me about stuff like that, just get subscribed up on Patreon, man. You can just chuck in a dollar and get into the Discord server. It's something that I'm really utilizing to the fullest as much as I can. And I will do a bit more in the future. So thanks to those guys who are supporting me on Patreon. And thank you to you for watching this video. Enjoy Inventor 2020. Well done to the Inventor team again for putting out such a cracking release. And I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!